So you are ready in the chat box. Give me ready. So back to question four. That's my question four here. All right. Okay, so let's go. So when you're doing the question, always remember the formula, which is the asset equals to liability plus equity money. Okay, every time when we are doing the questions, remember this formula. Okay, so start with uh, this one. So, nyatakan kesan terhadap hmm, So, nyatakan kesan terhadap aset, liability dan equity pemilik bagi setiap urus niaga. Urus niaga means a transaction in English. Alright, very good berdasarkan contoh diberi. So, each of this is satu urus niaga, one transaction. Okay, so, number one, contoh. Membeli barang niaga secara kredit, two thousand ringgit. Right, so this is satu urus niaga, and please write it down that each urus niaga there are at least dua, uh, dua butiran. I would say or dua two things. Or two keywords, All right? Must be other duo. Okay, let me re repeat again. So each urus niaga must be other duo uh, keywords. All right. So example uh, for number one, when you membeli barang niaga, so barang niaga je lah satu. Okay. And then secara so credit. So credit is an keyword. So two. Can you see or not? So when we say barang niaga in here, we are referring, we cannot say barang niaga, we are referring to inventory. All right. And then when you see secara so credit, so now ask yourself a question. Do you Beli barang niaga, secara kredit, meaning you buy. Okay, beli means you beli. You beli barang niaga, secara kredit. So, when you beli, so, membeli secara kredit, meaning, this one you need to record in your account belum bayar. Okay, these are some uh, nota nota that you can write it down on your book, right? So when you say membeli secara kredit, what is secara kredit? Meaning secara hutang. Okay, so okay, I give you example for here for this question one. Give you a scenario. Okay, so barang niaga. Let's say I beli saya beli kasut. So kasut ialah satu barang niaga, an inventory. Okay, so when I'm membeli kasut secara kredit, maksud apa? Meaning, I, I buy the shoes, I can use the shoes first, but I haven't paid yet. So, I belum bayar lagi. Can you see it? So, in other words, other than saying belum bayar, we can say secara kredit. Okay, do you understand? If yes, give me a yes. So, whenever you see a secara credit meaning you belum bayar lagi if there is a beli. So, in other words, okay, if I terbalik it, alright, if I say menjual, now, if you sell secara credit, ah, when you see a secara credit, memang belum, ada the belum terms. But now, if you jual secara credit, then you have to record in the Account belum terima, yes. Ah, so this is the logic behind it. So when you see the secure credit, that's the keyword. So when you see the secure credit, you cannot straight away say it is an ABB or ABT. All right, you have to look at the kata kerja. 
Okay, is it beli atau jual? If beli, B kan? Okay, B for beli, beli, B for bayar. So, when you see beli secara kredit, belum bayar. Okay, then if it's jual secara kredit, then it is belum terima. Okay, so that's why I establish here, always there are two things. Okay, so here two account, barang niaga, secara kredit, so this is the ABB. Okay, so now next, inventory ialah asset ke liability atau equity pemilik. Obviously, inventory is your asset. And then your account belum bayar is in your liability. Alright, so all this inventory ABB already given you. So it's here in your nota. So if you check back, okay, inventory na Inventory is kat mana? Under asset. If you say account belum bayar, mana account belum bayar? Ah, sini account belum bayar is under your liability. You see it? Alright, so next now you have to ask yourself when kita beli when we buy barang niaga okay when we buy inventory this inventory akan tambah atau kurang when you buy barang niaga meaning the barang niaga the, the kasut or the inventory akan bertambah because dia masuk Okay, when you buy a shirt, you buy a new shirt, meaning in your uh, in your house, you will have one more new shirt. The number of the shirts in your house akan what? Bertambah. You see or not? That's why here, under the asset column, it is inventory, you add 2,000 because it's 2,000 ringgit. Okay, and at the same time, your liability, your account belum bayar, so now you owe more money. All right, you second you belum bayar another 2000 ringgit. So under your liability, your account belum bayar your 2000 bertambah. Right? So this is how you record. So you will see that always that two account. One inventory, another one account belum bayar. So for two, number question number two then there are also two accounts. Okay, let's see how to do this. Question number two. Membawa masuk lengkapan peribadi untuk kegunaan perniagaan. Now, when you see the membawa masuk, this is the keyword for your modal tambahan. Or you can say modal. Now, we say membawa masuk. Okay? Peribadi means sendirilah. Okay? Barang sendiri. Meaning, sekarang, we bring in, membawa masuk, we bring in our own lengkapan. Lengkapan can be your lampu, can be your kipas, okay, can be your air conditioning. All right. So now, when you bring in your own, my own, let's say, kipas. When I bring my own kipas from my house to my business. Is it not? So now the business is using my kipas. I use my own money to pay my kipas and now it is being installed in the office. So that's why they check untuk kegunaan perniagaan. Now, when you think, okay, always there are two accounts. Huh? So now you have to identify what are the two accounts here. Okay, the first one you saw the lengkapan. Lengkapan is an account. So, and the lengkapan is under the asset, therefore, under asset lengkapan, right, lengkapan. Okay. Now, I always tell you that whenever you do the accounting question, you have to see from the perspective, from the point of view, from the business. Okay. So, when we are standing from the point of view, from the business, okay. When the pemilik bawa masuk lengkapan, when they bring in the lengkapan, so sekarang lengkapan saya tambah atau kurang? Tell me, plus or minus? My lengkapan now increase or reduce? Plus, plus, okay, from the point of view, from 
business ah, not from the pemilia. I told you because of the concept entity pricing on. You remember? So the pemilia, the owner, is different from the business ah. And now the pemilia bawa masuk what the lengkapan. And therefore, from here, we know that the lengkapan akan bertambah. That's why here we tambah berapa ringgit. The lengkapan is worth 2,000 ringgit. So, you tambah 2,000. Right? Okay. And at the same time, where is this lengkapan from? From the... Bawa masuk. Bawa masuk ini, tadi saya tell you the, the keyword for it will be modal. Yes, shivash ini is modal. And the modal is underwear. Now, that's where you have to think back your classification. There are five. Either asset, liability, or equity per million. And is it? Or the hasil dan belanja. Right? So, now, the modal is under equity per million. Therefore, your modal tambah 2,000. All right, and there is one way to check your answer here, okay? Which is this formula: asset equals to liability plus equity per million. Okay, how do we use this? Okay, let's go. Uh, go from question one. Yeah. Okay, question one: How much is your asset? Your asset is two thousand ringgit. Betul tak? Okay. Then your liability is you have to equal to liability. Liability is two thousand ringgit, and then your equity per million is kosong, right? For question one, so tambah kosong. Now, is it not? So it equals to two thousand equals two thousand. Imbang lah, two thousand sama dengan two thousand, meaning question one sudah betul because of this formula. Okay, let's try again. For another question, let's try question two. Okay, question two asset is 2000 ringgit, right? Okay, then liability is zero. But then your equity per million is how much? 2000 ringgit. Who? Sama lagi is imbang. When it is imbang, meaning auto. Okay, now nah, maybe because this is 2000, 2000. Okay, let's try question three. Okay, question three. Membeli barang ni, okay. Whenever we see membeli barang ni, we know this is what? This is inventory. And inventory is in your asset. Okay, so you write inventory. Okay, when you beli, beli means apa? Your inventory akan bertambah. Plus, right? So, pertambah you plus how much? 4,500 ringgit. Okay, and at the same time, always remember there are always at least two accounts. Right? So, after inventory, okay, dengan apa? Where is this inventory from? Dengan check. And check is the keyword for bank. Okay, you can also write check here. Okay, because there is no account check. There is only account bank or account tonight. Now, check is always referred to bank. Therefore, your bank, oops, let me write again, space. So, inventory plus 4,500. And then now, bank. Where is bank? Bank is in your asset as well. Therefore, bank. Okay, but now, when you beli barang, when you buy something, you buy a new shoe, then your shoe bertambah. Right? You have new pair of shoes. Your shoe akan plus. But at the same time, you use your own money to pay for the shoe. Maksudnya, your money akan minus. Yes, berkurang. Can you see or not? Therefore, we have to minus bank 4,500. Ah. Can you see or not? All right. Okay. Now let's check the answer. Okay. So come back using this formula. So for asset is how much? When you use four thousand five hundred minus four thousand five hundred equals to what? Your asset is zero. 
Betul? Then your liability, no changes. Equity per million, no changes. So it is zero to zero. So is it imam? Yes, it is balanced. It is the same. So this is correct. Do you understand or not? If yes, give me a yes. Ah, right. That's why you must learn this formula before you do accounting. Because this is very, 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 very important. All right. Okay, now. Let's continue. Question four. Okay. Pemilik membuat, okay, ambilan. Uh, do you remember ambilan? Okay. Yes, ambilan is under equity pemilik. All right. So, barang niaga 300 ringgit. Pemilik membuat ambilan barang niaga. So, dia ambil barang niaga. Barang niaga, Refer to inventory. Inventory is in your asset. Okay. So, when you unbuild barang niaga for so tadi, now it becomes another way around. So, P for pemilik and then B for business. Alright. So, sekarang pemilik ambil barang niaga meaning now the barang niaga is going towards the pemilik. Maksudnya sekarang barang niaga dalam bisnes kita akan berkurang. Therefore, you have to minus 300. So, okay. And then at the same time, you ambil barang kan? So, the ambilan akan bertambah 300. Faham tak? Because the, the barang niaga go to the Pemilik. And so the ambilan increase 300 ringgit. Okay, but then when we check this thing, all right, we check the answer. Asset is minus 300. When it is minus, then you put minus. Minus 300 equals liability is zero. Okay, but then you think, eh, ambilan. You plus 300, so meaning plus 300. Then it becomes the imbang because it will become minus 300 equals to plus 300. But remember this formula. Your in front of ambulance is always a minus sign. Ah. All right, in front of minus, okay, why do I say plus 300 tadi? Let's say your ambulance there is 200. So now when I ambulance another 300, so I becomes plus 300 lah. So it becomes 500. You see not? So it is minus 500. So you ambulance a total of 500 ringgit. So here is something like that. So you plus then here is a minus actually, minus 300. So at the end, it's actually minus 300 equals to minus 300. Even though I hear I write plus 300, but it is the ambulance, you have to always remember that in front of ambulance, there is a minus there, right? So that's how you go with it. Okay, next. Number five, membayar faedah atas pinjaman dengan tunai. So, there are two things here, faedah atas pinjaman and dengan tunai. So, first thing I know, you know how to record tunai, right? Tunai is in asset. Okay, 180 ringgit. But when you say membayar, that means what? Your money akan berkurang. When it is berkurang, you minus 180. Okay, where do we record for this faedah atas pinjaman? Faedah atas pinjaman here, we put it under equity per million and it is belanja. Or we can actually put untung rugi lah, right? Easier, right? Untung rugi and then minus 800, I mean sorry, 180 ringgit. 
Because this file data pinjaman is actually a belanja. And how do we get this untung rugi? Untung rugi. Untung bersih. Oh, untung rugi equals to your hasil tolak belanja. Alright, so this is a belanja file data uh, pinjaman. Therefore, is if it is a belanja, then you have to minus hundred eighty ringgit. Why no liability, sir? Because there's no liability so far. Lah. So when there is a liability, then I will show you. Right? So, so far it's like that. So, 29 minus 180 ringgit. And then your untung rugi is minus 180. So, when you put into this formula, you will see it is minus 180 equals to equity per million minus 180. So, this is in bound. Alright? So, next. Number six. Memasukkan jualan tunai 2,000 ringgit ke dalam bank. So, memasukkan, now this is tunai to the bank. What is jualan tunai? Jualan tunai means you jual barang and then you get cash. Now, from the cash, you want to put into the bank. Maksudnya, your tunai akan minus 2,000 ringgit. Betul tak? Okay, and then at the same time, your bank akan tambah 2,000 ringgit. So plus minus zero. And then here's zero, zero. So it is simbang. Okay, question seven. Memulangkan barang yang kerosak kepada pembekal. And this pembekal is the keyword or it is, or I would say is the same meaning for your account belum bayar. Right, so when you say memulangkan barang yang means inventory. So when you say memulangkan barang yang meaning you now you, you return your inventory. Let's say you you buy a new shoe and then found that your new shoes should are rosa. Okay, so when it's rosa, you will go for a refund or a, a return. Okay, so you return the shoe back to the store. So the moment you return. Your shoe akan berkurang. The number of shoes in your house will go down. Therefore, your inventory akan tolak 240 ringgit. Okay, and this ABB account belum bayar is in where? Is in the liability. And therefore, you have to put the account belum bayar here. So here's the example of liability. All right. So uh it is minus 240 ringgit right next so remember this account volume by is under liability and tadi the fighter at the spinjaman is a belanja is not a liability Right, therefore, it cannot be recorded in the library, it has to go into the untung rugi. Okay, now number eight, Jonathan memulangkan barang niaga 80 ringgit kerana salah size. Now, this question is a bit uh, misleading because it says Jonathan memulangkan barang niaga, but from here, if you look at question seven, we always assume in front is saya or kami or kita meaning the first person me memulangkan therefore this is a pulangan uh, to to the pembekal okay, but then from question a they check up jonathan meaning this jonathan is actually our pelanggan our customer right so this customer memulangkan barang niaga kerana salah satu meaning mereka memulangkan barang niaga or this inventory to us. Is it not? Therefore, our inventory akan bertambah 80 ringgit. Okay, and at the same time, this pelanggan, this Jonathan, is also our account belum terima. Right? Therefore, your ABT, ABT is under your asset. All right? We will have to minus 80 ringgit. 
because before that Jonathan hutang kita 80 ringgit. Pas sekarang Jonathan pulangkan barang yang dia itu, therefore Jonathan tak akan hutang saya 80 ringgit anymore. Okay, he doesn't owe me 80 ringgit because he has already returned the shoes to me. Therefore, you minus 80. And when you do the calculation, here is actually zero. Your asset is zero. And then to the other side is zero as well. Therefore, this is inbound. Okay, so far, are you following? If yes, give me an F. Give me an F to show that you are following. You can see that all these are actually mostly, I mean, not mostly, like at least, all right, at least there are two accounts, right? At least two. Okay. Now, what is next? Question nine. Okay. Menjual lengkapan 600 ringgit secara credit. So, I told you, whenever you say menjual secara credit, this one, all right, menjual secara credit, meaning there is ABT. So, who is the ABT? The ABT here is MISA. Yep, ABT account, belum terim. Okay, apa yang kita jual? Nah, look here, this is not barang niaga yang kita jual. Sekarang kita jual lengkapan. And when I sell out my lengkapan, meaning my lengkapan akan berkurang. And when it's berkurang, you minus 600 ringgit. And at the same time, we got ABT, account yang belum terima. Let's say this lengkapan is a fan, all right? So I sell this fan to Misa, 600 ringgit. But Misa haven't paid me yet. Meaning I haven't received the 600 ringgit from Misa. Therefore, I have to put Misa into my account belum terima. And Misa owe me 600 ringgit. So plus 600. And when you do the calculation, minus 600 plus 600 is actually zero. All right, and zero equals to zero plus zero. Therefore, it is inbound. Okay, number 10. Membayar sewa kedai. So when you see a membayar sewa kedai, this is actually account sewa di Buyer. And if you still remember, I told you that saver the buyer is actually a belanja. And in belanja here, we record under the uh, untung rugi. And untung rugi is under your equity permit. Therefore, in your equity permit, untung rugi. And because you buy, therefore, this is a belanja. Belanja must minus 870 ringgit. And Bayar dengan apa? Dengan check. And check is always referring to bank. And bank is under asset. Therefore, I put it in that uh, column. All right. And this bank, because I pay, when you pay something, you pay your rental or you pay anything, you pay your bill, your money will reduce. Akan berkurang. So you minus 870. Let me check the answer. Asset equals to liability plus equity per mile. Your asset is minus 870. Your liability is kosong, but your equity per mile you got to minus 170. So you see that it's actually inbound. All right, now go to 11. Lima kota barang niaga. All right, the ambil. Okay, now even though you see the Ambulan, you would think that, oh, the ambil masuk ambulan. But no, hey, we have to chat. Ambil untuk apa? Okay, here it says that dia diambil sebagai promosi perniagaan. Oh, so when you ambil for promosi, I told you, promosi is a belanja. Alright, it's not an ambulan. I think I showed you before. In the nota, you look at your belanja here. Ada tak? Ada promosi tak? Hmm, eh, tak ada. Okay, so you add another one here. So, promosi is one of the belanja. Alright. So, here, 
ambil sebagai promosi. So promosi, same thing. When it is a belanja, you put into account untung rugi. Under your equity permit. So belanja minus 80 ringgit. And because this one is not dengan apa? It's not dengan chat. So you cannot minus your bank. This is from where? From your barang niaga. Barang niaga is inventory. Meaning your inventory less 80 ringgit. Lima kota is ready use. Ah, inventory tolak. Because you take the five kota from your inventory, go and do promotion. Maybe you give free sample to the customer. All right? So that's how you record. Your inventory goes down. So when you do the balancing, minus 80, zero, minus 80. So it's in bank. All right, 12. Menerima pinjaman. Pinjaman is a big, easy term. Okay, when you see pinjaman straight away, you know this is a uh, liability. Right? So your pinjaman will add 40,000 ringgit. Add uh, mark times up. Uh. All right. Okay, now, when you say you pinjam, pinjam, duit. Now think, what is the other thing that akan bertambah? What will you receive? Okay, when you pinjam money from the bank, the bank will give you money. And when the bank gives you money, meaning I dapat duit. Kan? So in my bank account, my money will bertambah. Therefore, in the asset, your bank akan tambah 40,000. Alright? No faida, ya? Yeah? Because in this question, the other check of faida. So, we, we, kita tak perlu go and uh, assume that there is a faida. No, don't have to do that. All right? And make sure this is not account belum bayar, ya? Yeah? Account belum bayar is always when you see a secara credit. Beli secara kredit. Okay, but this one you borrow from the bank. When you say borrow from the bank, then straight away know that this is a pinjaman. Okay, and the pinjaman bertambah 40,000 because you borrow 40,000 from the bank. And when you do this, uh, you put in the formula, your asset is actually plus 40,000 and your liability is actually plus 40,000 as well. Can you see it? And then equity permanent is zero. Therefore, it is the same. So, are you clear, guys? If yes, give me clear. Clear, give me clear. So later, you got a homework for this from your workbook. And then you go and, uh, is it? I think got, yep. So you just go and do it. Improve on this part. Okay. So why do we talk about this part? Is because this part will lead us to question five, which is the actual persamaan per account. All right. So before that, let me show you what is the persamaan per account. So this is the jado, the, the persamaan per account table. All right. So there are, I give you two situations. Because you have to know that for business, there are actually three, three, three points that they are leading to. Okay, these three three ways uh, they are going to. Uh, first, just started business. Okay, so meaning just starting only. Okay, we want to start a new business. So just started. Okay, second, meaning they are continuing. So business have been doing for many years. So they continue uh, to run their business. All right, so continuing, meaning ongoing. Then what is the third one? You start, then you go on, and at the end, there is a Close down. All right. So these are the three possible ways. 
just started or you continuing all right so last year you've been running a business this is this year you continue next year you continue okay but maybe someday your business is not good or you're sick or or you want to retire you you, you don't want to run this business anymore then you got to close it down right so these are the three uh possible okay the three possible uh route that one business will be in okay so here for this personal per account there are two situations so it's the first one is just the just started one and then the second one is the continuing one can you see it so for each way then we have a slightly different way to do the question so you have to read the questions carefully, right? But of course, there's no uh, the third way for this close down one because if it's not closed down, then you don't have to do the Pesama Amprekona anymore, isn't it? All right, okay. Then, what is this Pesama Amprekona actually is? Okay, so this Pesama Amprekona is a very simple way of accounting or of recording your daily transaction or in bm we call it a uris all right so this personal record normally is being used by a very very small company like all those kedai runci because it's very simple very easy right they don't have to go and hire someone to pay high salary because their business is small their profit is small therefore and their revenue their uh, Jordan is small, so they cannot cover the expenses of hiring uh, like an accountant, for example. Can a cafe use this? Obviously can. Okay, but depending on how big the cafe is. And this personal account can only be used. Do you still remember in Bob 1, I talked about, what, what do we call it? The, the entity, penegaan. There are four. Right, number one is the sole trader in BM, we call it a Milikan Tunggal. The second one is the partnership, uh, the in BM, we call it uh, forgotten, uh, perkongsian, yeah, perkongsian. okay. And then the third one is the company, syarikat. and then the fourth one is the corporacy, right? Okay, and only Number one and number two uh, can use this one for some pregnant because share card and corporacy you have you must have proper accounting. What is proper accounting? Later you learn about this proper accounting. Meaning from document, you need to go and do the, the journal, ledger, post account, and then you post to uh this um Penyata kedudukan kewangan, akaun untung rugi, uh, akaun perdagangan. Alright? But then for small business, milikan tunggal or perkongsian, maybe they run a small cafe, okay? Not much of revenue. They don't pay much of tax. You know what I mean? The cukai. So instead of doing akaun untung rugi, they can do persamaan perikanan because their transaction is not too, too large. So they just open, draw a jada persamaan perikanan, Ada apa kenderaan, you throw it in. Ada perabot, you just throw it in. Inventory in, out, you just put it in. How much is in your bank, you just write down. So a simple, so this is a very simple way of uh, recording. Are you, do you understand? If yes, give me a yes. So always remember, this is a simple way of accounting. And this is used by... Uh, small business very really really small all right and that's why when you go to your university level you go for professional you don't learn you don't actually learn about this <laughs> okay because they can't hire you when you go to professional level you come out you become a chartered accountant no way you go and uh be hired by the kadarun cheat place because how much can they pay you? Imagine you are requesting for 
10,000 ringgit because you have to earn back your investment. What do you mean by your investment? You invest to your, to your study. You go to your university. You need to pay the tuition fee, isn't it? 10,000, 20,000, up to 100,000, depending on uh, which university you're going to. So imagine you pay 100,000 ringgit for your accounting degree. Of course, you expect your salary to be higher when you come out to work. So there's the way you see it. So that obviously, you won't go into the, the small business. You, what do I mean by small? You look, look at the roadside. Ah, roadside, John Nasi Lama. Do you think that they, they need to do something like that? Ah? Let me show you. Mm. Is the uh, twenty or false? But okay. Hey, no. Twenty point five. Hold on, yeah. Let me show you. Up two. Okay, wait. Not here. Where is it right here? The formula. Okay. Okay, where is it? Mm. Do you think the, the roadside nasi lemak jauh kuih pinya or jauh some uh, bread? They do something like that or not? You go and use computer, type out everything. Uh, you go and calculate one by one the inventory hour, Berlian. The past two, you got all these things. Then you type out your untung kasa. And then from here, you got your account untung rugi. And then you need to plus all the hasil minus the belanja. You get your untung bersih. And then from your untung bersih, then you post to your penyata kedudung kewangan. And then for each inventory, uh, kenderaan perabot that susut ni ayat terkumpul, uh, all these things we don't even know. Alright? So, for those one, they won't come to this level. Alright? Normally, this level is for company, syarikat. Okay? So, go back to here. That's why for those uh, small quick, I think for mama, okay, all this mama shop, uh, the, as long as they has a kedai, proper kedai one, normally lah, okay, biasanya they will have a proper accounting one. Okay, because they have to look at their sales. Mereka punya jualan each uh, setiap bulan berapa. Mereka punya belanja berapa. Hasil berapa. Lepas tu untung berapa. Okay, you see it? Okay. But for those at the, by the roadside, they will just do something like that. Uh, they will write on their book. They have a small book, a journal book, okay, to record all the money comes in. Because I used to work in this um, an accounting firm. Okay? So there are a lot of these clients, they are like this small business. Maybe they have their own. Uh, yeah, I think they got a cafe as well. Yeah, a, a restaurant, but a very not too big one, normal small bis, uh, business. So they have a book one, okay, a book like like your nota lah, your buku nota, right? So this what is this buku nota actually is to write all the expenses, you know. So they will write like like that. So write everything there. Monday, uh, twenty first, Monday, proper comes in. Uh, what is the jualan? Lepas tu belanja berapa? You beli sayur, berapa ringgit? Uh, then gaji berapa, you write there. And then next page, another day, like that. So with one book, they can settle it. Okay, and then maybe at the end, then because they don't know anything accounting, so they go to the accounting firm and then ask them to help them to do the accounting. Why do they need to do the accounting? Because they need to pay what? Chukai, the tax. Ah, so based on the information from the book, okay, then the, the accounting firm will help them to do lah. Okay, so from all this word, need to translate 
into maybe an Excel sheet, something like that. Okay, we can do something like that as well. And then kira, kira, kira. Okay, then we kira, oh, how much is the untung bersih? And then from there, uh, then you bought the tax, something like that. All right. So do you understand? Yes or no? So this is just the front part. Okay, this is part two, very simple. Okay, for your form four level. After this one, after part two, you kita tak akan come back to here again. But mind you, in your exam, they might come out. Okay, they might come out. Sometimes they do come out. All right, so make sure you know it as well. Okay, so okay, forget to show you. So this is the formula. So you got asset, liability plus equity. Okay, equity per milik. Then under asset, so if anything under the asset, so you throw it in lah. All right, then liability and equity under them, you put the procurement lah. Account belum bayar pinjaman modal untung besi. Okay, then you got RMRM. So this is the number of the urusan niaga. So you based on the question one, then you put one, two, then you put two, and then at the end, okay, like that. Okay, so let's go for question five. Now, can you see now? So these are all the urus niaga, and then they already given you the format here. Very good. So you just copy. So now, take out your book and copy it. I'll click on my Excel. Okay. So question five. So you draw out the the table lah. Okay, you could this one and do the same thing, similar thing. Rose Niaga. Plus two, you got asset. So under asset, you got alatan perjabat perabot inventory account belum terima ABT bank lepas tu account belum bayar pinjaman modal untung bersih So this one, watch yourself, then so here is uh, the liability, liability plus equity per million. Okay, so and the line. Mm -hmm. So. Make sure it's neatly uh, prepared for this table. Okay. Something like that. Then the arm RM tree in. Always remember, don't forget about your RM. Okay. Oops.
All right. Are you guys done preparing the table? If yes, give me a done. This is, you don't have to close the line yet. Lah. You just leave it. All right. So make sure here you got your stuff here. All right. So you have to draw it neatly, but at the same time, fast. Okay, don't be too slow. You need to go like but 5 cm, then everything 5 cm, 5 cm, 5 cm. No, you don't have to do that. All right, aga aga. As long as the words are neatly written, you can see because they don't need to throw in the figure. Okay, all right, so let's see. Okay, let's read from the top. Johnson ialah pemilik perniagaan Johnson yang menjalankan perniagaan jual beli kasut di bandar utama. Berikut adalah urus niaga yang berlaku bagi perniagaannya sepanjang bulan Januari 2021. Alright. So, now look at A. Dia cakap dia memulakan perniagaan. Can you see? It? So, ini dia just about to start this uh penegan starting from January 2021. All right. So the Ulus Nega, let's say A. Okay, A dia memulakan penegan dengan memasukkan one to nine, sixty thousand ke dalam bank sebagai moda permulaan. So recall back what we have done from here. All right. So when you say memasukkan wang tunai, my wang tunai in my business akan bertambah, right? And this wang tunai is in my bank. Therefore, under bank here, I akan tambah sixty thousand. Correct. Okay, you don't have to add right plus in front lah. You don't have to. Okay, so sixty thousand is true. We put that sixty thousand to the bank, and I say always there must be at least two accounts. In one urus niaga, so when you see uh, memasukkan, okay, sebagai modal permulaan, so meaning this is go into your modal how much sixty thousand, and when you do the comparing, the asset equals to the liability plus equity per million, and this is actually from your formula. Can you see it? So sixty thousand equals to sixty thousand. So yes, this is. The way to do it. Okay, now we go to B. Okay, B membeli perabot kedai. So when you say membeli perabot, meaning my perabot akan bertambah. So sure we know perabot mesti ada. Okay, dengan check. Check is to bank. Can you see or not? So your perabot you add bertambah twelve thousand. And at the same time, because you buy, buy up, you beli dengan your check. So under your bank, you have to minus because the akan berkurang. Okay, so now when minus in accounting, you have to bracket. Okay, please take note now when you're doing minusing in accounting, you put a bracket there. We don't use minus anymore in accounting. We use bracket. Bracket means minus, right? And when you do the checking, under asset, 12,000 minus 12,000 equals to zero. And zero equals to zero. Da -da. Okay, we go to C. So are you following? Have you done B? If you have done B, give me B in the chat box. You should have said B, Vinya, give me B. All right, so if Dalam exam, I mean for form four, if you are doing going for the first exam for accounting, probably they will test you this one. Personal perkara because nothing much left to test for the first five or six chapters in accounting. So definitely this will be coming up. But in SPM, there's a possibility. Okay. So make sure you learn this because this is super easy to score full marks. All right, C. Membeli barang niaga bernilai 8,000 ringgit daripada top enterprise secara kredit. When you see secara kredit, I told you mesti account belum. Belum apa? When you see beli, be account, belum 
bayar. Yang account belum bayar is under the liability. Can you see or not? So, berapa? ringgit. Okay. And then at the same time, you beli barang niaga. Barang niaga is under the inventory dalam asset. Another 8,000. Imbang lah. Asset 8,000 equals to 8,000. So it's balance. Okay, go to D. Johnson mengeluarkan barang niaga berniaga itu untuk kegunaan sendiri. So when you say mengeluarkan barang niaga untuk kegunaan sendiri, this is ambilan. So this is very important at the end. Always look at the end. Okay, what is it saying? Is it untuk promosi? If it is untuk promosi, then it is in the untung uh, per se. Under the equity family. If they check untuk kegunaan sendiri. Or keyword, untuk kegunaan peribadi. Ah, sendiri, peribadi. Anak, sendiri. You know, all this is like for own use. Ambilan. Okay? So, D, you got ambilan. And you mengeluarkan barang niaga. Can you see now? Your barang niaga. So this is inventory. Definitely your inventory akan berkurang. Berkurang how much? 2,000 ringgit. So you minus. You bracket. Okay. You minus 2,000. Untuk kegunaan sendiri. Your ambulan. Okay. Now. Under this column. There is no ambulan. If there is no ambulan in this column. There is no title ambulan here. Then you put it under your model. So you put 2,000. Minus. Okay, meaning your, your model here akan tolak 2,000 ringgit. But, if you ada satu column for ambilan, you can focus lagi satu ambilan, then you just put ambilan, then here you put 2,000 ringgit. But here 2,000, you don't have to minus. Why? Because ambilan in front here is actually a minus dah. Okay, but we don't write minus lah. But you know that in front of ambulance is actually a minus. Okay, so in the formula, the end, we have to minus 2,000. Even though this 2,000 is in plus here. Okay, but this is not relevant here because... Okay, so here more down, you minus 2,000. So imbang. After D, we go E. Membeli komputer daripada Orange sendian bahan berniaga 8,900 ringgit. Okay, full stop. Wang pendahuluan. What is wang pendahuluan? This is your uh, first payment. Or we call it a down payment. Okay, telah dibayar dengan cek 1,000 ringgit. Okay, dan bakinya akan dibayar pada bulan February and now we are in January, isn't it? Okay, so slowly process it, process this question. So this computer is 8,900 ringgit. Okay, and kita telah bayar. Nampak tak? Telah dibayar dengan check. Check means telah bayar dengan bank. It, correct. 1,000 ringgit. Meaning, ada berapa lagi? Ialah baki. The 7,900 ringgit ini adalah baki. Isn't it? The balance. Yang belum bayar lagi. And what did they say about this balance? Dia cakap, balance ini, the bakinya, akan dibayar, will be paid. Haven't paid it. Will be. Maksudnya, ini akan dibayar. So, this part is actually your credit, secara credit. So in other words, this 7,900 ringgit akan masuk to your account belum bayar. Yeah, yes. Alright, so how do you throw into the table? Okay, let's see. So uh, we are in E. So you put the Usnega E. Oops. E. Okay. So 8,000, okay, now what is this 8,900 ringgit? Don't forget, this kita beli computer. Maksud computer kita akan bertambah and computer is our alatan pejabat. Always remember that, computer is in alatan pejabat. 8,900. Great. 
Okay. And then, kita telah bayar dengan check. One thousand ringgit. So, under bank there, my money actually telah tolak one thousand ringgit. Okay. And lastly, other remaining buck. If you stop here, jika kamu stop at here, salah. Why? You check ah. Asset is how much? Eight thousand nine hundred plus minus one thousand equals to seven thousand nine hundred. Correct. Then here, ada benda tak kosong? Makes sense or not? Based on your formula, asset equals to liability plus equity per milli. Tak equal. Salah. Betul tak? That's why there is another bucky seven thousand nine hundred ini. It is in the account belum bayar because you haven't paid it, and account belum bayar is under your liability seven thousand nine hundred. Now, now when you you try it again, ah, so now your asset eight thousand nine hundred minus one thousand equal to seven thousand nine hundred, and then under your liability plus equal to permula you got your liability seven thousand nine hundred here. Oh, okay. Now, sama tak? Is it equal? It is. So when it is equal. Then ninety nine percent your answer here is betul, correct. Are you clear for the E part? If yes, give me E in the chat box. Paham E? Give me E. Yeah. E stands for easy. <laughs> right. This is very easy stuff. Okay. Let's continue F. Okay. F. You may draw one over four. So this is something that you have learned from your maths since kindergarten. Not kindergarten, maybe maybe from your your standard, you know, standard one, standard two in your primary school. So one over four, you know what it is. I don't have to explain it. Okay. So you may draw one over four directly by the inventory. Okay, from this inventory. Okay, about the super. Sentuh dengan harga four thousand ringgit secara kredit. When you see menjual secara kredit, meaning this is a ABT. This super sentuh is your account yang belum terima. Okay, remember that. Okay, now the question is how much inventory yang kita telah jual? They say one over four. I cannot put one over four here. Right, even though here say four thousand, I cannot minus four thousand from here. Why? Because this is the harga, not the cost. You have to remember this, or you have to know that the harga, harga means harga jualan, is different from your cost. Correct, or not? Or if I put it in English. The selling price or the price tag that you see on the item on the supermarket that you see, or the phone that you want to buy from Huawei, Apple, Oppo, Xiaomi, blah blah blah, Nokia, is different from the cost that they use to make the phone. The iPhone, let's say iPhone thirteen Pro Max, they sell for let's say the highest uh capacity, the highest gate. Okay, I don't know, maybe about seven thousand ringgit, about six thousand plus seven thousand. Right? Do you think that the cost of making this iPhone at about seven thousand ah? Definitely not, isn't it? No, a big no. If they, if Marika Bunyak cost is seven thousand ringgit and they draw for seven thousand ringgit, Marika untung apa? Tak untung. Look at Apple every year; they're making so much profit. Ah, then you know that the cost maybe is just. Somewhere around five hundred ringgit. I don't know this assumption. Okay, because you have to know that the cost is actually very low because they, at the same time they produce a lot of um 
phones. Okay, at the same time. They're not doing one by one. When we talk about Rolex, Philippe Pate, Tech Hoyo, all these uh, Swiss um, watch that you see, the luxurious uh, Omega, okay? But it's not a Swatch versus Omega, la, okay? The one is cheap one, but the, the luxury, the, the rare one, uh, like Rolex, uh, okay? The, 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 how do I put it? The, the more expensive it is, then the rare it is. Meaning, because all these Rolex, why is it so expensive? It's because they have their technician, okay? They do the, the watch using their hand instead of machine. You know what I mean? So they have to like assemble all the, the materials together. And this one requires high skill specific skill all right that's why they can go up to rolex can go up to 1 million if it is well by uh, a queen of elizabeth or some well-known people so the price will definitely go shit up very high okay but when talking about iphone iphone is a very generous stuff anyone can have it as long as you have the money so you can have 10 1000 1 million people having the same model of iPhone. But when we talk about Rolex, maybe there's only one Rolex that for that model. So it is kind of like a limited edition or limited uh, number of Rolex that's available in the market. That's why it's so high. Okay, and definitely the cost will be high as well for, the, for this stuff. But then come back to this iPhone, let's say it's just 500 ringgit is the cost, right? Therefore from here, if you draw the sales, the selling price is 7,000 ringgit and the cost is just 500 ringgit, then how much is the untung, the profit? The untung is actually 6,500. So this is the untung. You know what I mean? So you have to know that what the difference between the cost and the Hagel Jordan. Okay, come back to this question. Now, read it again. Dear Manjo, 1 over 4 derivative inventory career super center dengan Hagel 4. Meaning this 4,000 ringgit is your Hagel Jordan. Alright, so Hagel Jordan, your selling price, 4,000 ringgit. Now, the question is, how much is our cost? And the rate given you is one over four there by the inventory. So now you have to do some calculation. Your inventory here is how much? So you use a calculator, you press 8000 because you believe 8000 from C, you believe 8000. And then in D, you tell us I'm built 2000 away. So you have to minus 2000 first. So it goes to 6000. Right, 8,000 minus 2,000 equals to 6,000. And the question say, dear Manjo, 1 over 4. So you use your 6,000 times 1 over 4. Then you get how much? 1,500 ringgit. Oh, in other words, dear Talam Manjo, 1,500 ringgit daripada inventory. So the cost is actually 1,500 ringgit. So how much is the untung? So 4,000 minus 1,500 equals to 2,500. So this 2,500 is the money that they made from selling this inventory to Super Center. 2,500 is the unto. And how do you record in this jador? So first of all, the inventory, you draw gun. Okay, so you got a minus, right? You draw, you could law. How much? Not 4,000, it is the cost. 1,500. Okay, next. How much they sell to this uh, super center? 4,000. And this super center is your, I say, it is your ABT account volume terima. How do you know it, if it is account volume terima? Because it's a charity credit. And your job. Therefore, in your ABT, you got 4,000 ringgit. Thus, super center, balloon buy 4,000 ringgit to us. All right. And then 
the untung of 2500 we have to record it somewhere if not when you do the maths 4000 minus 1500 equals to 2500 and this 2500 is under your asset then if your liability and equity permit is kosong then it is not balanced you the summer we have to make it summer zero zero or summer summer or one one it has to be summer and this untung is under this your untung we say is a hasil 2500 record it here so whenever you got a untung you have to put it in here you have a belanja a rugi then you have to minus here but now it's untung so you add so it's actually imbang dah sekarang 2500 and 2500 from your uh, equity permit so are you clear if yes, give me G. A is it G? Oh, sorry. This is F. Sorry. F. Because we are in F now. Well, I'll skip to G. Huh? Okay. Very good. So, take note of this. Huh? The untung is very important. Okay. Let's continue. After F, we go to G. And what is G? G, Mumbaya. Separuh hutang kepada top enterprise dengan check. Hey, apa tu separuh? Ah, if you don't know what separuh meaning, you tak belajar kamu punya tata bahasa dalam bahasa Melayu. Okay, membayar separuh separuh means what? Half or one or two. Nah, sekarang faham tak? So, dia cakap dia bayar separuh hutang kepada top enterprise dengan check. You buy kepada top enterprise. And who is this top enterprise? Okay, so, you go back. You refer back to the question. Mana ada top enterprise? A kat sini. C. What happened to C? So, you read back the C. What does it say? Dia cakap membeli barang niaga. So, kita membeli barang niaga 8,000 daripada top secara kredit. Oh, so, top enterprise is kita punya ABB ini. Okay, kita belum bayar kepada top enterprise tapi hari ini dalam G saya bayar separuh okay, kepada top dengan check. Can you see it? So, what is the separuh of 8,000? 8,000 divided by 2 or times 1 over 2 or use a calculator or your finger you can calculate 8,000 over 2 equals to 4,000. Therefore, you bayar kepada this uh, top 4,000 need to minus because sekarang when you buy your ABB you buy it the top and the price your hutang akan berkurang so you have to minus the 4,000 and kita bayar dengan check check is always referring to your bank so in my bank my money akan berkurang 4,000 ringgit because I pay to this top and the price which is my account Belum bayar. So, not 7,900. 7,900. Why 7,900? 7,900 is what? 7,900 is E. You have to see it very carefully. Your E is orange. So, number hat. Is it top enterprise? It's not top enterprise. When we refer top enterprise, we refer back to C. Because top and the price appears in C, and C is the eight thousand ringgit. So you use the eight thousand ringgit. You buy two, you get four thousand ringgit. Are you all clear? If yes, give me a C for clear. All right. Yep. Wrong question. <laughs> okay. So let's continue. Okay. So this is how you recover G lah. Meaning. For top enterprise, you use 8,000 minus 4,000. Sekarang, ABB for top enterprise, you another 4,000. Right, we got 8,000. Kalau bayar 4,000, we got another 4,000 yang belum bayar for this top enterprise. Okay, now we go to G. Okay, we done G. So, sorry, we go to H. Now, H, membayar sewa kedai. Ah, just remember, we done something similar. This one for... Well, question for tadi. Right? So, membayar sewa kerana sewa dibayar and sewa is a belanja. When it is a belanja, 
you got the minus from your untung uh, bersih uh, 800 ringgit and you buy it dengan apa you buy it dengan check check same thing when you see when you see a check must be in the bank and the bank tolak 800 ringgit yes and we done for h okay last z the i menerima pinjaman sebanyak 10000 ringgit daripada bank we got pinjaman is it not you pinjam 10000 from the bank so your pinjaman akan bertambah 10000 ringgit okay and when you pinjam you from the bank obviously kita akan receive you akan terima 10000 ringgit dalam bank account kita so dalam bank sini i add 10000 ringgit so 10000 with 10000 imbang set for i so after you done from a to i draw a line So you get Pulia. Then here we, we put your baki. You want to draw, extend the line to here as you can. Okay, so this baki is a balance, lah, right? So what is the balance for the alatan pejabat at the end of the month? So you add everything. This one, 8,900. Okay, perabot, you add everything, your balance, you didn't buy new thing or, or sell any perabot. So you remain at thousand. I mean, sorry, twelve thousand lah. Okay, what about inventory? Okay, no. So eight thousand. You got the minus two thousand. You got the minus thousand five hundred. Then we get four thousand five hundred. So four thousand five hundred is the baki for inventory. This is the balance, the remaining four thousand five hundred. Then the A B T simple lah, four thousand. Okay. Then this one, a lot of calculation. Your bank, you use a 60,000, use your calculator, minus 12,000, minus 1,000, minus 4,000, minus 8,000, and then last but not least, plus your 10,000. You get 52,200. All right, same thing for everyone. You add up everything. So let's say for ABB, it would be 8,000. You got the plus your 7,900. And then when you see a bracket, you got a minus it, 4,000. And the pinjaman, 10,000. Ah. Right. Okay, then your modal, use a 60,000 because you added satu ambilan of 2,000. So you got a minus it. So you get 58,000 for your modal. And then your untung bersih will be 2,500. It's a untung from your jalan. And then the 800, you got a minus because this is the belanja for your sewa. All right. So at the end, your baki is... Uh, like that. After that, draw a line. Okay, you do something like that. Uh, this is the final part. Okay, after you get all the baki, 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 okay, this is what we call the jumla. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to add the Joomla for your asset side. Can you see now? That's why they part it like that. So here will be all the asset you add up. So what are the asset? The 8,900 plus the 12,000 from your prayer boat plus the inventory, 4,500 plus the account bloom terima, 4,000 plus the bank, 52,200. Then you put it there. It is 81,600 for your asset. Okay, now what about this part? The liability plus security permit. Same thing, you add up. So you got 11,900 plus the 10,000 from the pinjaman plus the 58,000 from your modal. And lastly, you plus 1,700 from your undum bersih. And let's see what would it be. It will be 81,600 as well. Can you see or not? So the Asset 81,600 must be equal to the liability plus security per million, which is 81,600. So equal, meaning this one, 99% you are betul. I always say 99%. Why? 
because one percent is maybe because there's some error in between. Okay, but if you do that neatly, correctly, it could the concept, the procedure, the steps. Okay, normally you add up uh imbang, then it must be correct. And so this is how you check the answer. So if you see different figure here, maksudnya maybe here you add wrongly. If here you check sudah tambah betul, then ah uh, your your urus negus itu salah. Maybe you didn't plus and minus properly. You didn't put it in the right column. Okay, maybe it should be in the model you put into the undung bersih, or it should be in the bank, but or whatever. All right. So that's all. So are you guys clear? If so far for this question five, all over overall, okay, in total. You faham punya, you clear, you can follow punya. You give me a five in the chat box. Right. So this is an example of your person I'm breaking. So it's very easy. You can actually learn it in one class. That's why I say this is super easy. Ah, uh, but then when you say when you go to account berdengan account untuk ngaji PKK, you start from beginning from document you. Put it into journal, journal arm, journal has. Lepas tu, from there you post it to ledger, and then from ledger, you have the buku tuna. You got all these things. Then you got imbangan dugo, and then from imbangan dugo to account perdagangan, account perdagangan, account untung lagi, account untung lagi, penyak terkundung kongan. Lepas tu, ah, catatan penutupan, and then all again and again. Nah, say so many things. Meaning what? These are the things that you have to learn. All the things I mentioned just now are the things that you have to know as well. From your form four and form five, all right. So, uh, this five, this jado persaman is the one. Okay, two later. Okay, so we can actually from here straight away pose it into PKK. Okay, from this part to PKK. So this one I will teach in next class. All right. So uh, this is five A. And then before I let you leave the class, of course I need to give you homework. All right, so take out your workbook. What is the workbook? Ini, all right, for form four. And then the question that you'll be doing, uh, will be page twenty-three. Right, you go to your page twenty-three. So you do question fifteen, page twenty three. Do question fifteen. So question fifteen is very very simple. Okay, you just have to put in apa yang berkurang, apa yang bertambah atau diadu kesan. Alright, so it's something similar to this, but this one you need to put figure. But for this question fifteen from your workbook, you don't have to put in any figure. You just say. Pertambah ada berkurang ada tiada kesan, alright? Okay. Then after question fifteen, you do question sixteen. Okay, now this question sixteen is something like that. Ah, alright. Then you just do something like asset liability and equity pembeli. Whether dia tambah ada ah berkurang for what thing? So you do something like that lah. Okay, if dia pertambah three hundred, then you put that tambah three hundred minus one thousand, then you put minus one thousand. Alright. After sixteen. Then ah seventeen, okay. After you learn from here, put into practice. Okay, so you just follow equal the format. Questions fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and lastly eighteen. Okay, so this is your homework for uh this coming week. Okay, so total four question. Have you jotted down? If yes. You put a noted in the chat box.